Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Widener Show. If you like the Mike Widener Show and you want to make your own podcast, well, let me tell you about Anchor. First of all, it's free. Secondly, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. You can also add any song from Spotify directly to your episodes. The possibilities are endless. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. You can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, many more. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get start the mike wagner show is powered by sonic web studios hi this is me i'm Austin Zell, also known as me i no time for love check out my latest book missing available in print and ebook formats on amazon it's now time for the mike wagner show powered by sonic web studios and sponsored by international award-winning author mia mosin zia of missing the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on over 40 podcast platforms, as well as HamiltonRadio.net, Diamonds FM, and the TheMikeWagnerShow.com. We can be heard in over 100 countries, featuring over 1,000 well-known and amazing guests throughout the globe, and named one of the top 100 global podcasts in the New York Weekly Times, Hollywood Entertainment News, Los Angeles Weekly Times, Apple, and Chartable. So sit back and relax and enjoy another great episode of the award-winning Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sockweb Studios. Visit online at sockwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking a budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs at below the competition way. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention Mike Wagner Show, get 20% off your first product. Once again, that's 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off of your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews and Eve Levin enjoys by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for those Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 40 podcast platforms, heard in over 100 countries, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music. Also on HamiltonRadio.net, Oldies FM, Diamonds Radio, and a few networks coming soon. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Wagner Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies, baseball gear makes great gifts 24-7. Go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Wagner Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Molsonzia for great books like Missing, Ones, Wrinkles, also T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, throw pillows, phone cases, and more. Amazon.com slash Mia Molsonzia. Check it out today. I'll support the Mike Wagner Show on Anchor FM. Hey, pal, the Mike Wagner Show.com. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Wagner Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with a terrific lady who was born and raised in Uruguay, a single mom of three, to becoming the number one international best-selling author as an entrepreneur, helping other entrepreneurs write and publish their best-selling books. We'll talk about that. And she has a unique approach to achieving success, which is out of the box. We'll talk about that. Her new book tells a story about uh, a late her immigrating to the U.S. Uh, with her 10-month-old baby looking for a fresh start, reunites with her husband who left looking for work and uh, also carried a heavy loan, which took 20 years to unravel. She's also the author of um, Write It Already, Start Your Clean Business and Make Money in a Week, How to Start Business During the Pandemic, and her new book, Waking Up from My American Dream. And live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studios in beautiful downtown Salt Lake City, the amazingly multi-talented Born and raised in New York way, and the number one best-selling author of several books, including the new one, Waking Up from My American Dream, ladies and gentlemen, Achieving the American Dream, the multi-talented 
Susanna Perez. Susanna, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much, Mike. Wow. I, now I'm all excited with all this big title and description. <laughs> well, look, well, look at you. I mean, you have some uh, number one bestsellers already. You got Write It Already, Start Your Clean Business and Making Money in a Week, and especially in these times. Also, How to Start a Business During the Pandemic, which has been successful for most people. You can share that. You have a new book called Waking Up from My American Dream. We'll talk about your story being uh, born and raised in Uruguay, single mom of three, to becoming a number one international bestselling author. And your mission has always been to help other entrepreneurs, being an entrepreneur yourself. You also have a way of achieving success. And of course, your new book tells a story about immigrating to the U.S. and um, looking for a fresh start and you achieve the American dream. And before we get into all that, Susanna, tell us how you first got started. Well, um, how I started with my books or how I started... So- Start with you, go on the way back machine. Way, 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 back. way, way, way back. <laughs> well, I was born in Montevideo, Uruguay. Um, it's a small country between Argentina and Brazil in South America. And I always wanted to come to the US, but you know, it's a dream that you have and you know if will you will ever achieve it. But fast forwarding to you know 20 years, um, I was able to get a visa with my husband and We had a two-year-old baby, a 10-month-old baby, and we were able to come uh, to the U.S. Two years later, we actually ended up getting getting divorced, and I was, you know, seeing myself with two kids, and, you know, I didn't um, have any family here, and I decided, should I stay or should I go? Should I go back to Uruguay or should I stay here? And I decided to stay because my kids need to be with their dad, you know, number one. And number two, I still thought that, you know, I came here for a reason. I want to continue, you know, looking for that and fighting for my, uh, my dream. I, um, two years later, I met my daughter's dad and we got married, but that didn't end up well. He had some issues with the law and addiction and abuse and, the whole thing, <laughs> you can read all that in the book. And um, here I was, you know, three kids. Um, I have to find a way to uh, support these kids. So I started my cleaning business, which I kept it for seven years. I was able to, you know, successfully grow my business. But eventually, uh, you know, what I really wanted to do was something else. I, I remember I was cleaning a house for this client of mine. And I always saw her working from home besi- before working from home was a thing. And I was like, what do you do? Uh, that so, sounds exciting because I saw her traveling across the country, going to different conferences. And she said, I am a book writing and publishing coach. And uh, I help people write and publish books. And I was like, what? Is that a thing? <laughs> I didn't <laughs> even know that existed. And, and I was like, wow, that sounds amazing. And she says, yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, and she says, I help people write and publish books. And I and I was thinking, you know, people like doctors and attorneys and things like that, you know. And then she says, no, you know, everybody can write a book. You can you can even write a book. And I was like, what am I going to write about? Well, her first advice was you need to write about what you know. You started a cleaning business and made it successful. You have employees. You should write about that. So that was my first book in 2017, how to start a cleaning business and make money within a week. And uh, it was it was so exciting. I couldn't believe that my name was in the front cover, you know, and my picture was in the back cover. I was like, what? I was able to do this. And uh, I published two more books in 2020. Um, they uh, write it already. And then... Uh, also, how to start a clean, uh, business in a pandemic. But I really wanted to write, to learn how to write a best-selling book because I've really wanted to do that. So I ended up hiring another coach. So at that point was my second writing coach that I hired and he helped me to write my best-selling memoir. And I did that in 2021. And it wasn't until then that people started paying attention to me Mm. before people were like, Oh, you wrote a book. That's, that's cool. That's, that's cute. But you know, it does, it doesn't stand out as much. 
Mm -hmm. But when I published my best-selling book, people wanted to hear what I had to say. People wanted to learn and want me to help them. And that's how I started uh, my book uh, writing and coaching business. And so far, I've helped more than a dozen uh, entrepreneurs write and publish their books. I only do nonfiction, so they're either memoirs or how-to books. Okay. And, and what was your inspiration for uh, helping other entrepreneurs? How'd you, uh, how'd you first come that to mind? So I wanted to, I love an entrepreneurs. This is my, I don't know. They're my people They're I love, I love what they do, what they represent. If somebody's going to change the world, Mike, honestly, is going to be an entrepreneur because they want a solutions. They want to help others and their community and their, not just themselves and their families, but they want to make a change. So if somebody is going to change the world, it's going to be an entrepreneur. And I want to help them because I was an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur myself. So I know, uh, you know, they have a message. They want to make a difference. They want to make a change. And I want to help them get there because by having published a best-selling book, they give them the, the, uh, a different, um, oh, that's the problem with being bilingual. Sometimes you run out of words. <laughs> well, I, actually, it can be trilingual as well, too. Like if um, if, if you're really talking to people and instead of Zoom and everything, you know, I, I had a thing where someone said, uh, yeah, everybody's bilingual, speak English and you speak on the phone. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and in case you're trilingual, you can also get away with that, too. So. And I can text. So that makes me makes it four. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, that'd be like a uh, quadlingual. It's like, uh, I, I think we'll come up with it later. Maybe we can write a book about that, too. So it's like, you know, yes, everybody is buying bilingual or something like that or trilingual. <laughs> uh, I get a little tongue tied and uh, we're going to have a little coffee as well. Too. So what I was trying to say, um, Mike, is that with a best selling book, you're able to stand up from the crowd, from your competition. You're not just a, let's say you're a chiropractor. Well, now you have, you're a published author and a best-selling author. So when people write the book, they're like, wow, I like this guy. He knows what he's talking about. I'm going to go ahead and call him. You know, I have further questions or whatnot. Okay. And, and then, uh, of course, entrepreneurship is being highly uh, encouraged here in the U.S. How about entrepreneurship in uh, Uruguay? How, 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 how much is that going out with an entrepreneurship and how much of this encouraged over in your country? So when I was, uh, I moved into the U.S. when I was 21. So I was uh, rather young, but I still had a small printing company from home. I was printing business cards, wedding invites, different things. But it's more, it's more difficult over there because um, they require much more than here. Mm. Um, how, how, how so? Like with uh, papers, documents? Um... Yes, papers, documents, fees. It's much more expensive to, to start a business like fully. You know, here you can buy the licenses online. You can register with the Department of Commerce and you're, you can do it yourself. Uh, over there, it's more difficult. You need to hire an attorney and, you know, so, or somebody that can do all the legal stuff for you and, and pay all the fees. So it's a, it's a little difficult. But I'm, I'm not saying that it can be done. It, it can possibly be done. There's businesses there too. I'm just saying that um, at that time when I was there, maybe it was, it was not as feasible. Mm -hmm. you, you also said you had a printing business back in Uruguay as well, too. And uh, what are some other businesses that you also uh, ventured in? So um, I had a printing business. Then I also had a store like a, I was selling clothes, like a clothing store, more like a thrift store. That's mm -hmm. what I had there, too. Um, here I had a marketing business, but I wasn't really honing to it, like marketing more for the Hispanic community. It was it was more what I was doing, but I ended up, you know, switching gears and just going into the books because I love books. I, you know, I like printing, design and also the message, sharing the message is important to me. Um, when I was growing up, I told my mom that I wanted to be a reporter and work for the CNN. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't happen. 
<laughs> but I'm on your show, so maybe, you know, it did happen in a way. <laughs> well, my ass opinion, this is better than CNN. I got to say that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, and of course, you know, and many of us love books as well, too. We love to read, we love to write, we love to print and everything else. And uh, where are some of your favorite authors and uh, writers growing up? Um, you know, when your mind goes blank, okay, this is... <laughs> This is one of those moments. So I don't read much fiction, but I also but I always like Sidney Sheldon. Sidney mm. Sheldon and all his stories. And um I remember that I wrote as many books as I could find of him in Spanish, and then I found one in English, and I wasn't speaking much English. Uh, and I was like, I need to read this stupid book because I love this author. So I read the book <laughs> with a dictionary. So here I was with the dictionary. And here I was reading the book. It took me forever, but I read, yeah. I read the book. <laughs> <laughs> and then I like uh, nonfiction because I think, you know, I like to learn. It was always, you know, it's always catching my, something catching my eye, you know, learning about publishing, learning about marketing, learning about self-improvement, you name it. There's, mm -hmm. you know, there's always something to learn. Mm -hmm. I also thought about Coco cookbooks as well too i don't know if you do cookbooks or anything but i had a guest on the show a while back that he learned english by uh learning from a cookbook you know that's sort wow of thing. You'll that's find awesome. from ways. yes it's like you know cookbooks watching movies or you know mm -hmm. listening to um something on the radio that's how people learn english from a cookbook i think that is very unique at least you can uh you know you have to find food. something yes. that you like you know if he likes to cook he will figure it out a way and he will make it happen you know Okay. Otherwise, if you don't have interest, it, it won't happen. But, I, you know, I'm glad that he found something that he likes. And yeah, I haven't published cookbooks, but it's something I can explore if somebody's interested. Well, you got a person right here. We'll talk about your, you know, your mother books as well, too. Right. Right. Already. <laughs> I'm more. But first, listen to the Mike Wagner show at the Mike Wagner show dot com powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at Sonic Web Studios dot com for all needs. Looking at a professional website without breaking your budget? Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout-out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia molson -Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews and even love and endorsed by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Molson Zia. Available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at the Mike Show.com on over 40 podcast platforms, heard in over 100 countries, also on HamiltonRadio.net, Diamonds FM, Oldies Radio, and a few networks coming soon. Take us with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash me and Muslim Zia for great books, merchandise, and more. Also support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, the Mike Widener Show.com. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Widener Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with a terrific lady who's the author of Write It Already, Start Your Clean Business and Make Money in a Week, How to Start a Business During the Pandemic, and the new book, Waking Up from the American Dream, Susanna Perez here on the Mike Widener Show. And um, let's talk about some of your other books as well, too, like uh, you had Write It Already, Start Your Cleaning Business and Make Money in a Week, and How to Start a Business During the Pandemic. And um, tell us about some of the books. And I think you uh, touched on a couple, and maybe you can talk more about that. You know, what inspired you to start a clean business, make money in a week? And first of all, let's say I start a clean business. How do you make money in a week? Well, um, first of all, I would say, I will say buy my book. <laughs> it's on Amazon. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> but um, you will get, of course, your supplies and you will make a flyer and you will uh, present, you know, your services, let's say, you want to do uh, residential. So you will you will list uh, the rooms that you'll clean. You will list what you do. For example, if you do windows, if you 
you know, you will do floors, you will do inside the, the fridge, inside the, uh, the oven, different things that people want to want to know. And then you can start price, you can put your prices or you can put start at, starting as slow as whatever price per hour or per job. And you can go on social media and post that on, uh, you know, Facebook groups, for example, you can go and send a text to your uh, friends and family, via, you know, just take a picture and send it to them. And you can also go uh, door to door and um, and drop off these um, these flyers. Hmm. OK. And, and now, also now, do you do you also you mentioned about uh, charging by the hour as well, too? Do you also charge by the um, the square footage, uh, like, say, clean the living room, family room, bedroom and all that? Do you guys uh, charge by square footage or you just charge um, by, by a certain rate and how big the living room is or like, say, simple, complex or anything like that? In other words, it's like, you know, how big the room is or if it's like really clean or it's like really messy, like somebody dump a garbage truck into your uh, living room? <laughs> well, <clears throat> I haven't done it for a while. Like I said, I sold the business in 2017. But for example, if it's a move out cleaning, somebody moves out of the home and they have to turn in the keys, we will charge by the square footage of the home. And then, of course, we have a list of everything that will, we, will be done. And then when it comes to a home where people live in there, I would rather... Uh, go and look at the house because not all not houses not all houses are, are alike, and the size of the house is important. But it's also important to know how many people live there, um, and if they have pets, cats, dogs, um, kind of the age of the children. Because little kids have some um, habits like fingerprints all over the place. Mm -hmm. Teenagers live things laying around you know oh so you just yeah have to... we've all been through that <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's different things that we look into it and uh, we see the condition of the home when was the last time that it was deep cleaned if it was deep clean a year ago it's not the same thing as two months ago so okay. so yeah and for that i will rate for example the first clean is usually takes longer and it's going to be more expensive and then regular cleanings are going to be cheaper uh, as long as you maintain, you know, every two weeks or or whatnot, or every month, instead of calling me every six months, then we're going to go back to the first price. Okay. And, and what made your business uh, different from the rest? So I try to do things um, uh, a little different. For example, um, I will leave thank you cards, thank you notes. I mean, of course, you're doing the job correctly taking care of people's properties, you know, uh, listening to what they need. For example, some somebody may be really picky about their windows. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure those windows are clean. Uh, versus somebody who don't care much about windows, but they really want to see their floor shine. So you will listen to what they need and you make note of that and you pay attention every time you go. But then, for example, if you see us, you know, a picture that says, okay, June 11th, um, wedding anniversary, you put it in your own calendar. And then on that week, you leave a little note saying happy anniversary. Nice. You know, there's a little thing because you're invited into people's homes. So you're going to learn more about things. Sometimes, you know, one time my clients lost their pet. That was really sad for them. And I just brought them some flowers and I left the flowers to them. Nice. Or somebody had a birthday and he didn't have any family in the state because he was a was transferred from another state so i left him you know flowers and some chocolates and you know a, a birthday thingy so treating them you know as part of the family they love that and and they will rem remember you and they will refer you and they will recommend you to everybody mm, that's certainly amazing and very unique about it i mean i would have called you right away if i can do that too so you know little chocolates <laughs> or whatever it is and what was the most inter interesting project that you ever had when it came to cleaning um, so there was, there was this family that they have, I don't know, four, five kids, something like that. And when we got there, it looks like a, like a bomb exploded and everything was <laughs> a disaster. It's like what you see on CNN, a lot of the war stories. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, and I was like, okay, I just, I was like, this family needs us. We're here to help. So I have two girls with me and. It took us like eight hours, but we clean 
the whole thing. Three people, <laughs> eight wow. hours. And then we have to go every week, every other week. I'm sorry. But then you go to the point where um, this is the thing. When I asked a person how long was the last time it was clean, I think it was like three months ago. And, and then I was like, okay, I understand. But if, if, I, if two weeks later we go back and things are back to the way they were before, <laughs> I'm like, wow, you may need more help than what you maybe you need us more often because, uh, you know, and she couldn't afford it. And I understand that's, that's uh, you know, totally understandable. But it got to the point that we were having a hard time going to the house, you know, because it wasn't, it was, it was just an uphill battle. And um, I had to end up telling her that we will, we can, we want to recommend somebody else for the job. So. Mm -hmm. Right. Like a construction company or something like that, bomb squad or anything like that. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I often think of that too. It's like Burn the house the, down and then build it again. Rebuild. Or, or like those uh, disaster services too, like a fire flood or, you know, like you know, <laughs> 50 million cats just like just, wreck the whole house, everything like that. I mean, yeah. most places as well, too. We got that. So, and of well, course, yeah, I'm not a miracle worker. I have to tell sometimes I'm, you know, I'm a house cleaner, house, house cleaner, housekeeper. I cannot do miracles. We'll, we'll do our best, but <laughs> snapping fingers isn't our thing. I got to say that too, but um, <laughs> you, you managed to sell your business. Um, you, you also uh, went to another book called how to start a business uh, during the pandemic. And, um, Tell us more about that book and what inspired you to write that book, so, especially during the pandemic. Yeah, of course. During the pandemic, it's actually when I started the business, I was like, you know, the world is going to end. I may as well do what I want to do now. So I started my business and I decided this is what's going to do. Publish books and help people write and publish their books. And I decided to write two more books. So the number one, one was it... Um, how to start a, a business during the pandemic. And I explore different businesses that people could start that um, it didn't require the closeness or see people, you know, every day or be in the same room or anything like that. So um, I just figured that, you know, people were going to be uh, exploring options since many people got, you know, laid off and lost their jobs. So that was one of the books. And the other book was uh, Write It Already and How to Overcome Procrastination and Write Your Book. Because many writers, we deal with procrastination. Mm -hmm. We think, oh, I have an idea about this book. And they take notes. All right, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, okay, I'm going to sit down and do it. And then it took forever to overcome, to do the actual outline. And then it takes forever to actually do the writing. And then we start editing before we even finish writing the book. And then yeah, it becomes a cycle. And then that's why people say, oh, I've been writing a book for 10 years. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. When, when, when you mentioned about right away, like a like your your way of um, avoiding procrastination or getting right to it, what's your recommendation to avoid uh, or to confront the procrastination? Well, um, I will say kind of think of, of your why's. Why are you write, wanting to write a book? Okay. So if this is why you want to write a book, just make a note, make a note, paper, put it on your, you know, on your wall or something by your computer, something that you see every day. And then I will say divide the, the work in chunks. Let's say 20 minutes. I'm going to sit 20 minutes and I'm going to write. I'm going to take a five or 10 minute break. I'm going to go outside. I'm, I'm getting up on my chair and I'm coming back for 20 more minutes. Um, that will be that will be something that, that works for some people. Um, I had a client that she uh, put herself... The, the goal that she was going to be 8, 10 in the morning. She's going to be up at 8 in the morning, and by 8, 10, she's going to be sitting in front of her computer, even if she didn't know what to write, even if she didn't want to write. So that's what she did. She she just made the first step, sat in front of her computer, and then started writing. And that's how she was able to – she didn't publish a book, but she uh, was able to write a um, – sorry. Um, she had a blog, so she was able to publish an article – every time she sat down from the computer. So, okay. You, you also help. You also mentioned about uh, helping entrepreneurs um, with, with their best-selling books and everything else. And um, what, what are some of the best-selling books uh, that they've written about subject wise, like, you know, about uh, besides writing, publishing, marketing, all that. What are some of the subjects that they've uh, written about? 
So, for example, I have different um, entrepreneurs. For example, I have a nurse that he uh, has 17 years of experience in his field and he wrote about suicide prevention and he teaches like mindfulness and, and different uh, techniques for people who are struggling with uh, depression. So that's so that book is about how to overcome, uh, you know, depressive depression. So suicidal thoughts. That's what mm-hmm. I was trying to say. <laughs> How to overcome suicidal thoughts and and get and get the life that they always wanted. Um, there's, for example, I have another uh, client that she's a yoga teacher and she wrote um, about yoga and about how important it is and the benefits. So she wrote it. Uh, I told them to write in a level of for somebody who never practiced yoga. This is the first time she, you know, is going to read a book about yoga and. Some aspects were directed to people that have already some knowledge about yoga. Um, I had another. I have another client that she does energy healing. So she writes about everything that is in relation to what she does, and you know, chakras and energy healing and angel messages and different things. And then I have another one that is also a yoga teacher, but she focuses on pregnancy and mm. preparation for birth. So she writes a book on how to how yoga can help your body, your you know um, how to get prepared for uh, pregnancy and the birth of the baby. Mm-hmm. And, so, and what's what's the approach that you recommend to our uh, clients to achieve success? I'm so sorry. Can you what, what's 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 the what's the approach that you recommend to help clients achieve their success? How my clients achieve success? Yes. Um, I think number one is clarity. They have to be clear in their goal what they try to achieve when they want to write a book, they have to be clear who is this book for? Because even though it's a memoir, in the case of a memoir, the book is not about you. It's about the reader. What is the reader going to to get from the book? What is he going to do at the time that he puts the book down? And the idea is that they're going to get, of course, new knowledge and ideas and solutions for the problems, but also they're going to want to talk to you and they want to, to the author, they want to, be able to reach the author for more, for example, the nurse that teaches mindfulness and different therapies or the yoga teacher, um, you know, that she has does classes or Zoom classes or more books or different things. Okay. It, it sounds like it's a rather unique uh, out-of-the-box approach like uh, unlike most others. So that's one of the things you always take. Well, the, I tell them that the book is a marketing tool. So this, the book is going to be working for them 24-7. And, you know, Amazon is the biggest library in the world. So it's <laughs> going to be working for them. And they're going to get, you know, I have a client, though, for example, that she talks about, she wrote a book about business processes, you mm-hmm. know, how to, if you have a small business, all the processes behind it, all the payroll and taxes and training and all of these things that you have to have as a small business owner, but people get overwhelmed. So by the time they put the book down, they're going to be like, I'm going to schedule a consultation with this person because she knows how to set things up for small businesses. So, um, you know, that way they, they know you, they like you, they respect you, and they know that you have the knowledge, because if you wrote a book in the subject, you are an expert. And if you have a best-selling book, you are the expert on the topic. Mm-hmm. And certainly very interesting as well, too. Where can we find uh, all your books at? So um, my books are under my name, uh, Susana Perez on Amazon. My clients' books are under their names because they are self-published authors. So what they do is they hire me to get the book put together to get it published, to get it launched and to become a bestseller, but it's under their name. But if you follow me on uh, social media, uh, I have Instagram or, or Facebook, you can see the books that I'm always, you know, working with. Okay. That sounds very amazing. And going from how to author, the best-selling author, she t- will talk about her book, Waking Up From My American Dream, Susanna Perez. You listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the MikeWagnerShow.com, powered by SoundWeb Studios. 
Visit us online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by official sponsor, The Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Molson's The Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We'll be back with author Suzanne Perez of Waking Up from My American Dream after this time. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1 800 303 3960 or visit us online at www www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host and I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I wanna give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamoshenzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers, and boy, are you in luck. Right place, right time. Tuned in to The Mike Wagner Show. You heard me. We're back with Suzanne Perez, the author of Waking Up From My American Dream here on The Mike Wagner Show. We talked about write it already, start your cleaning business, hire star business during the pandemic. And um, let's talk about your book, Waking Up From My American Dream, uh, Being Born, Raised in Uruguay, Single Mom of Three. And uh, let's hear about your journey going from Uruguay over to the U.S., achieving the American dream. Thank you so much, uh, Mike. So when I sat down to write this book, I thought, oh, I'm going to write a book about coming to America and what got me here. And that's what I had in mind at first. But when I started writing, I felt like the book needed to focus on something else. Mm. So I do talk about immigration and my immigration uh, uh, path and the process, you know, and the pathway to citizenship and all that. But the core of the book is about generational abuse. Mm. I That's what he mentioned there, that that is the... Um, the baggage that I was bringing with me that it took me 20 years to unravel because I didn't know how much it affected me. Um, the abuse that was coming from my grandma to my mom, to my mom to me, and probably happened to them before, way, you know, way from way back. But um, I didn't want that abuse to go to my children. I wanted to be the end of it. So I had to do the work to recognize it, to find forgive, you know, forgiveness and understanding for what my mom went through and what my grandma probably went through. I couldn't really talk to her, uh, interview her about the book because she was gone by that time. Mm-hmm. But I was able to, to interview my mom and, uh, and understand uh, what was going on. So it wasn't easy. <laughs> When I actually sat down to write my book, I I was in shock because I was like, that's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the coming to America part and all the pretty things and the challenges and, of course, reaching the American dream. But then this other ugly thing was poking at his head and I was like, I need to address this. So I... I didn't want to. I didn't want to get up from bed for like two weeks because I was like, I hate this. I don't want to talk about this. I want to. It just gives me. It made me physically ill. Mm-hmm. But I was like, okay, I need to do this. So I called uh, my insurance uh, and I was like, I need a counselor. <laughs> Find me some <somebody laughs> patients in my area. And I got there to her office and I sat down on her couch and she's like, so what brought you in today? You know how they are. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, I'm writing this stupid book and now I have to finish it because I already paid the guy. I already paid my coach, you know, so I just have to do it. So we started talking and it took us, you know, let's say about six months. Wow. <laughs> to process things that you can be, you know, six months can be a long time or can be a little, little time compared to depends who you ask. But I was able to, to go through the process and understand it and, 
So the book tells you all the different challenges that I face. I face, uh, I was a victim of abuse, neglect, and child sexual abuse when I was growing up. And then I was say I had to, uh, you know, go, you know, deal with that and, and then forgive and, and heal myself. And of course, uh, well, I don't know, you're not in Utah. So uh, one of the biggest reasons to come to Utah is because I was a member of the LDS church or the Mormons, how they call it. Mm-hmm. Um, I decided to leave that religion after 20 years, but that wasn't an easy experience as well, because, you know, after you're part of something for such a long time, it's, you know, it's a difficult decision to leave, but also a difficult decision to stay if you don't agree with how things are um, around you. So that's that's what I talk about also in my book. And uh, and of course, I talk about the overcoming my challenges and I, I talk about forgiveness and hope and happiness at the end because life continues and you have to find peace and move on. Mm-hmm with your choices and with the cars that you've been dealt with. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned something too, about your uh, husband um, going to the United States to look for work and uh, maybe tell us about that. And what kind of work was he uh, looking for? So when he first came, he spoke very little English like me. So we took uh, the very first job that he took was a uh, production uh, produce company so they were packing you know vegetables and and fruits and loading the truck and then the trucks going to the stores okay he was doing that okay and, i mean and eventually he was able to you know get another different job and then go back go to school and get his degree uh, so but we ended up getting divorced so that's mm-hmm. his life <laughs> right what, what what was what was his uh trade at the time but what was he wanting to do as a trade um, he, he was, he's a computer guy, so he wanted oh, to do IT. Okay. That's what he ended up doing. Okay. I was going to, I was going to say, I bet she's trying to take down the number for Sonic web studios. If you want to give them to him or not. So <laughs> 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 we, we, we also had that too. And, and, all, and also in your book as well too, that, um, you know, after, um, you know, your husband, uh, you guys divorced and, um, you know, he went to work and everything else. And then the next chapter as well too, you also talked about, um, you know, so many other ventures as well, too. And um, how long it take for you to, um, you know, realize your American dream, like, say, you know, coming in, your husband's looking for work, you get divorced. And then it's like, you know, tell us about the time, like, you know, you, you were on your own, you had uh, your three kids and everything else. Mm-hmm. And then you went on to uh, helping others, um, you know, start their own business, you became number one. And how long did that take? You know, going from, say, your, your husband so, um, leaving you. That to took about. Bestseller. How long did it take about? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say it took a little time, but it took like 15 years. Wow. Because I was a single mom of three, so I had to, to do what I need to do to support my kids. So I was working, you know, seven years uh, cleaning houses and running a cleaning business. And after that, I became a, a life insurance agent and I worked for, with insurance for four years. But you know, you have to do when you have kids in the house, you have to do what you have to do to make sure to, you know, support the support your family. But then as the kids grew older, I have two out of the house because they're adults now. I mean, I was able to uh, to venture a little bit more and thinking, you know what, this is what I really want to do. This mm-hmm. is and, and I want to go all for it. And that's what I did. Mm-hmm. What was that one light bulb moment that somebody said to you? This is what I'm going to do. That was, I think, 2020, you know, because pan- the pandemic happened and, you know, everybody was up in arms because we didn't know it was something different, something challenging. And I was like, well, if the world is going to end, <laughs> I got to do what I need to do. I got to do what I want to do. Mm-hmm. So I may as well leave my dreams and, and try. And at least I tried, even if I fell, mm-hmm. you know. And, and what do you want readers to uh, get from your book? So um from my from my memoir um what i want uh to to get uh, people to get is um i want them to think that their dreams are valid and that it doesn't matter what happened to them before i mean it it does matter because that's you know it happened but don't let that define who you are uh because 
we can choose to be angry and to be resentful and to be just angry with the world and with God and with the universe and with life. But we, or we can choose to heal and choose to forgive and choose to move on and, and, and to say, you know what, I'm still alive. I still have the chance to achieve my dreams. I don't care how old you are. You still have a lot, have the chance to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very important as well, too, and very inspiring, Susanna. And where can we find your book, uh, Waking from My American Dream at? It's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. Uh, you can either get the Kindle version, the audiobook, or the paperback. Okay, we will certainly do so. We're here with author Susanna Perez of Wake Up My American Dream and some other books on the Mike Wagner Show. Just a few more minutes, Susanna. What else can we expect from you in 2022 and beyond? 2022 and beyond. Well, what I try to do, um, of course, keep helping um, entrepreneurs write and publish their books, but I want to be able to do uh, retreats for writers. Sometimes... Nice. We need to make our times ourselves to actually, you know, step out from the from the house and from the office and just take time for ourselves to actually decide to start the book. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do writer's retreats so people can take a weekend off and start their books. Mm, I like that idea. We'll certainly let everybody know about that. And who do you consider your biggest influence in your career? Um... I would say my mom and my grandma, because those, even though they, they faced a lot of challenges in their lives, they were women that they did what they had to do for their, for their families. Okay. So they, they're an uh, example of resilience. Okay. I would say. Okay. That's, that's amazing. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Um. The best advice that I could give, I would say, put yourself first because uh, we cannot take care of anybody else if we don't take care of our needs. And it's not selfish to take care of our needs. Mm -hmm. And that's very important as well, too. Self care is the best. We're here with author Susanna Perez of Waking Up from My American Dream here on the Mike Wagner Show. Susanna, very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Learned a lot from me. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date, keep in touch. Love to have you back. And once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact you? Where can people purchase or check out your books? So if you go to Amazon, it's Susana Perez. Uh, just put my name, S-U-S-A-N-A-P-E-R-E-Z. And there's, uh, it's going to show all my books. Um, Susana Perez.us on Facebook or um, also Instagram. And the website is www.susanaperez.us as well. We certainly have checked those out. Once again, Susanna, very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Looking forward to you having soon. Make sure you keep this up to date. Keep in touch. Love to have you back. We wish you all best. And you definitely have a great future ahead of you. Thank you so much. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I wanna give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamoshenzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show. Brought to you by international award-winning author Mia Mosin-Zia of Missing. And powered by Sonic Web Studios. 
be sure to join us again on over 40 podcast platforms. And of course, on the MikeWagnerShow.com, HamiltonRadio.net, and Diamonds FM. Don't forget to support our program with a generous donation at the MikeWagnerShow.com. Thanks for listening.